Here I have a big 32 channel network video recorder and it might look a little bit different than NVRs that you're used to. First, you'll see there is no integrated PoE switch in the back of this NVR. And next, you'll notice that we have not one, but two NICs, or network interface controllers. This first port, obviously, is for connecting my NVR to my main network. But what exactly are we supposed to do with that second port? Well, we actually have a few different options, and that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Hey guys, it's Tyler from Nelly Security, and today we are going to be talking about dual NIC NVRs. We offer several NVRs here at Nelly Security that have multiple network ports. These are usually found on larger NVRs that support a large number of channels like 16, 32, 64, even 128 channels. And there are a few different ways that you can use these dual NICs to make your life easier. And in today's video, I'm going to walk you through three of those methods. We're going to be talking about net fault tolerance, load bearing, and multi-address applications. The method that you choose is totally going to depend on your unique circumstances and the goals that you are trying to accomplish. But for the majority of scenarios, we are going to recommend a multi-access setup. But just so that you're aware of all of the options, let's talk about all three of these methods. First, we have net fault tolerance. With net fault tolerance, both ports on the NVR are connected to the same exact network. In fact, both ports are doing the exact same thing. 99% of the time, you're not even going to notice a difference between the dual NIC setup and a single NIC setup. But the key to net fault tolerance is redundancy. If one of those ports were to crap out and stop working, you still have that second port connected to your network to make sure everything is running properly. If you are in a scenario where you always need your NVR to be connected to your network, no matter what, net fail tolerance gives you that extra redundancy. It adds a small layer of protection just to make sure your NVR is always working. The next method we have is load balance. Now this is similar to net fault tolerance in that both ports are connected to the same network. The difference is there is no redundancy here and both ports are actually sharing the load of the cameras. To understand this a little bit better, imagine that we only have one port doing all of the heavy lifting. Now let's say you have 32, 64, or even 128 cameras connected to this NVR. That's a lot of bandwidth, that's a lot of processing, and you are probably going to see some lags in performance. When we have net fault tolerance turned on, both ports are doing the same heavy lifting, and so there really isn't any relief for your system. But when we flip this to load balance, the work of maintaining all of those cameras falls equally across both ports. With load balance, you can continue to add more cameras, and the load will be balanced between the two ports. This is a great option if you are experiencing performance issues with the number of cameras that you have added to your NVR. Now that we've talked about net fault tolerance and load bearing, let's switch gears for the rest of this video to talk about multi-address applications. With the multi-address function, your NVR is going to be connected to two separate networks. And you can see here in the interface, when we change the working mode to multi-address, we have the option to adjust the settings for each NIC individually. This is a great way to segregate your cameras onto a separate gateway, get them off of your main network, and free up some of that extra bandwidth so that it's not interfering with other devices on your main network. If I connect port one to my main network and port two to a secondary PoE switch, I can configure this second NIC to be on a different gateway. So for instance, my main gateway is 192.168.1.1. I can come in here on my PoE switch and change this to the gateway 192.168.2.1. Now for each camera I install, I can edit the IP address to fall onto that secondary gateway and connect it to this second switch. Now these cameras are no longer a part of our main network, but they can still be discovered, managed, and recorded by our NVR. This is incredibly useful for several different applications. First, you can take all of your security cameras off of that main network and put it onto this separate isolated network. Again, just to free up all that bandwidth on your main network. Second, you can also treat this kind of like the load bearing setting, but with a little bit more control. For instance, if you have 64 cameras to set up, you can add 32 of them to your main network, and then you can add the other 32 to this PoE switch and put them on the secondary gateway. 
This way, again, the work is balanced across both ports. The obvious difference between this and load bearing being not all 64 cameras are on your main network. Again, multi-address is going to be the setting that we recommend for most scenarios. It gives you more control over your NVR, more control over your network. It's going to be easier to troubleshoot issues when they arise. And all in all, it's just gonna make your life easier. Let us know in the comments below, do you have a dual NIC NVR? If so, what is your favorite method to set up your cameras? If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to reach out to us anytime. We are always happy to help you out. If you learned a thing or two from this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us across social media so you never miss another security video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.